Welcome again to my classroom students. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of exponential growth and decay. This is going to be a little uh, longer video than my usual videos because I'm going to explain to you the formulas that are related to exponential functions. And then we'll practice a couple of questions together. So first of all, I'll start with exponential functions. There goes the short form for functions. And exponential functions are basically two types. Either you are looking at a growth, that means something is growing exponentially, or something is decreasing or decaying exponentially. So there are only two options that could happen in word problems at times that they can uh, give you. So now exponential growth. Now what does it graphically mean? Graphically means as you go from left to right, your graph, your y values are increasing as your x values are increasing. So it's exponentially growing. Now exponential, we have seen linear functions also, but exponential means um, something that is growing at a very high rate, at a very larger rate as compared to linear. Um, we will now look at the graph of a decay function. In decay, basically what happens is when you have your y value, your x value starts um, increasing. As x increases from left to right, y was having a higher value it attained, and now it's slowly decreasing for that value. So exponential growth could be uh, population in real life. And let us say after a certain flavor was introduced in an ice cream uh, store, the sales increased exponentially. So that could happen. Decay is usually the half-life of carbon in chemistry that you will study with decay. Um, decay is also at times related to, um, you know, how something is decreasing over the time. So it can be uh, your money in account at a certain rate if it's decreasing or increasing. And in, uh, it is related into banks and money also, the exponential function. So these are a couple of examples. Another example that came to my mind with the chemistry was the bacteria. The bacteria in a certain, uh, when they are, for example, when you have cold and flu, the bacteria in your body are not increasing at a linear rate. They are increasing at an exponential rate. And that's why the doctor decides whether you need antibiotics or no. So that is how they figure out if the bacteria is really increasing at a higher rate. All right, this, with this taken care of as to why we need to learn all this is basically going to have some real life application eventually. We'll clear this off because on this page, I'm going to share with you the formulas that will be pertaining to growth and decay. So the common formula that we use is going to be P times 1 plus or minus R to the power of X. So the function y equals, it is in the form of x, where p is the original amount. So that's your initial amount. Now you can see there are two signs here. The plus sign actually stands for growth. Because what is happening is, you are actually having more amount now as compared to the original amount you had. So let us say originally you started with 1 you are increasing the amount at a certain rate and where x is the time. This is the rate at which the amount is either increasing or decreasing. It's in percentage and we have to convert it to a decimal. So that's something we need to remember. Now what happens in decay? The formula is pretty much the same. The only thing is p. 1 minus, because now from your original amount, you are decreasing. The amount is getting decreased or decaying to the power of x. Now, this section here, let me choose black. This section here is called your growth factor. Now, growth factor is basically uh, by how much is the value increasing. And it's in parentheses, so it's like a factor. That's why it's called the growth factor. And here, this is called the decay factor. So again, 
uh, remember P is the original amount. So let us say we are starting with the initial bacteria, you know, 16,000 bacteria in a Petri dish. And it is increasing at a certain rate. And we will see after this certain amount of time, after two or three hours, how much is the total bacteria. So this formula can be used for growth, for decay. Let us say we are looking at something that's decaying at a certain rate. So with that taken care of with the important formula, hopefully that makes some sense to you. And we will move on to our next question. And I'll just take care of clearing this away. And we will start with um, a word problem this time. So we will usually growth and decay questions will be word problems. So we are starting with Midgetown. So as I'm writing, please bear with me. It's going to be a long word problem. Midtown had a population of 10,000 until a college was built. So that means there was a small town and then uh, a college was built in that town. Let's see what happens next. Now, the population. Is growing by. Twenty percent each year. write an equation so this is a little easy concept because they are not asking you what is the population after 10 years or something you just have to write an equation of the population So we are going to actually show an equation that uh, shows the population of Midtown uh, and also graph it just to make things clear to us. So remember the formula for um, any exponential functions is y equals a times b to the power of x where a is the initial amount. This b is the rate and this x is going to be the time. Now here instead of 1 plus r I have taken this as a letter b but it is pretty much the same formula that I had on the last page it is 1 plus r to the power of x. Simply one thing in place of 1 plus r I have used b in place of p I have used a because p is the principal amount so here we are not looking at the principal or in a bank uh, you know type of question. That's why I'm using a here So but they actually stand for the same thing. So let us um, Set up our equation for this question So our final amount or final population will be given as 10,000 is the initial population So 10,000 the rate now in order to find the rate it is growing, right? So it's a growth formula that means I already have 100% of population that I'm starting with, which is 10,000. And every year, it increases by 20%. So every year, it increases by 20. So its total is 120%. Now, if I have to convert 120% into a decimal, it will be two places from left, I will put a decimal. So it will be 1.20 or 1.2, same thing to the power of x. That means if I have to calculate the population of um, the midtown after, after a certain number of years, I just have to plug in the value of x, which is years, and I can calculate that. Now, how does that look in a graphical sense of approach? In graph, I have input and output values, domain and range, where x is, let us say, 0. That means at the initial time. You will see it will be 10,000 how? 10,000 times 1.2 to the power of 0. Now in exponents, we have learned that as any number to the power of 0 is 1. So the population will be 10,000 itself. 
I'll try to do it on the next page. I'm thinking there's too much going on right here. So I'll just go ahead and erase this. So we can take a look at our um, input output table with a little better way. Like I said, it's going to be a longer video, so please bear with me. Remember our equation was y equals 10,000 initial population, rate at which it's increasing 1.2. Always remember in growth type questions, your rate will always be one point something because you already have your original amount and it's increasing. So it will be little more than one. So to the power of x. Now let us try to make an input output table for this x and y. All right. Uh, let us say x is zero. Zero means at present. What is the population with the no growth yet? 1.2. No growth, no time, zero. Any number to the power of zero is one. So 10,000 times one, 10,000. All right. After the first year, 10,000 times 1.2 to the power of one, which will give me 12,000. And you can use a scientific calculator to calculate and check if my calculations are correct. Um, next will be when I have to the power of 2. It will be 10,000 times 1.2 to the power of 2, which is going to be uh, uh, 14,400. Now, just be careful, students, a little bit, a little tip on calculator, how you type in the calculator, I would suggest. You can actually put in everything into the calculator all together. You don't have to do in bits and pieces. If you're careful about how you type things in the calculator, it'll make your life so much easier. So you put the parentheses, type the parentheses in your calculator, then put 1.2, close the parentheses to the power of 2. Or just put the 2 on the top here and then press answer or equal to, you'll get your answer right away. So just little things you have to be careful about. Uh, what I have seen is that students would multiply 10,000 and 1.2 first, which is really wrong because you have to do the parentheses first. So these little things, if you're careful about, calculator will take care of all your work. So 10,000 times 1.2 after three years, let's see what happens, how our population is changing. So as you can see, it is a growth problem. Um, it is uh, the population is growing after they opened a college. But what are we starting with? So on the graph, it should look something like this. And it's slowly increasing. So it is an exponential function with different values right here. So hopefully it made some sense to you. And then on the next page, we'll try to do some questions uh, where we have to actually calculate the answer as well, not just give an equation. All right, let's take care of um, this gone for now. We'll start with our next second example. And I'm giving using a name or shout out to one of my students, Alyssa, right now. She really wanted me to use her name. So here, Alyssa, here you are. Alyssa plans to buy a truck, hopefully after graduation or close to graduation, not right now. All right, she plans to buy a truck that depreciates. Sorry about that. That depreciates. Now, what is the meaning of depreciates? Depreciates means basically it's losing its value at a rate of 15% per year. If the initial cost of the truck is $20,000 or we can word it as what is the cost of the truck rather than how much money I think. So we can say that what is the cost of the truck after three years?
Now, here I can also say that I'm roasting Alyssa because her truck is decreasing in value. So I found a way to roast her. I, I can already see her smiling or laughing maybe loudly. All right. Um, now, students, this question is about decay. So we have to be careful that we need to find out at what rate is the value of the truck decaying or decreasing. So our formula remains the same. Y equals P is the initial amount. 1 minus R will be this time our formula to the power of T. Or I can have A, B to the power of T. Same thing. Now, because it's a decay question, that's the reason I'm using the minus formula. So I'll have 100% is the original cost minus at what rate is it decreasing? 15%. So if it's decreasing at 15%, I will subtract 15 from it. That means the value of truck is going to be 85% of its original value every year. So in order to change 85% to decimal, I'll have 0 0.85. And that's going to be my R in the question. So it will be Y equals P. What is the original amount of the truck or what is the cost of the truck? 20,000 initial value. I already have the rate here, so I can just plug it in over here, 0 0.85 to the power of t. Now, how do I determine t? t is going to be three years because in the question they're asking me after three years, what is the value of the truck? Or for how much can she sell the truck? So this is an exponential decay question. So remember to read your question very carefully and then set up your formula. Always remember in decay, um, your rate is going to be less than one. Whereas in growth problems, your uh, rate is going to be always more than one. So when you plug this in into the calculator, always remember to put parentheses and the power of three because that way you're telling the calculator that please solve this first and then times it by 20,000. So these little things I repeat if you're careful about. The calculator will directly give you the answer, which is $12,282.50. And 50 cents. So after three years, the value of the truck has depreciated because it was initially at a higher price, 20,000, and now it's at 12,000. So hopefully it made some sense again depreciation minus sign, growth plus sign in right here. All right, let us see this fly away. We are ready for our next question. All right. So we'll have a word problem going. I'll call it question number three. And in this question, I'm giving a shout out to Billy. So what's the story with Billy here? Billy is opening. A savings account. At his local bank. Too much writing in word problems. He invests an initial amount of two thousand dollars. And his bank gives six one by four percent interest. So he's getting some interest on the money he's deposited each year. How much money will Billy get? after 20 years. So I'm sure after 20 years, Billy will be needing this money so to use towards his education. So let's see, after putting in some money in the bank, after 20 years, he definitely should have more money because this is an exponential growth problem. The, as the um, bank is giving some interest towards that money. So let us list out our things. Our initial amount or the principal or A is $2,000 because that's what he's depositing. 
Next up, our rate. Our rate is increasing at 6, 1 by 4, or I can say 6.25 is the rate in percentage. Now, what is it in decimal? What is the rate in decimal? Let us change it. So it is 100 plus 6.25. So it is 106.25. Now, it is 106.25%. I cannot use percent in the formula. I need to change it to decimal. So in to, to change it to decimal, I move it two digits to the left. So that means it is same as 1.0625 as my growth rate. Now time will be 20 years. And once I know all these things, it's really easy to calculate the amount Billy is going to get after 20 years. I just have to plug it in into the calculator now. 2000, the initial amount he had in the bank. Then I have 1.0625 to the power of how many years are we looking at? 20. So my answer after I uh, put it into the calculator, I'm getting 6723. So Billy is going to have $6,723. 0.706849. So let us um, round this to 6723.71. So he will have at least six thousand dollars seven hundred and twenty-three six whatever six thousand something dollars after twenty years. Too much math in my head right now, I guess. All right, so hopefully it made some sense that this was a growth question and how we calculated the percentage for the growth question. Okay, let's see this fly away. Like my daughters uh, say that it's really cool to see, see it fly away all in, at once. All right, on the next sheet, that is this sheet, I'm going to give you um, exponential formula for compound interest question. Now, what you need to understand for these questions is any time in the word problem, it says that the interest is compounded annually or monthly or things like that. That is the formula you will use. And because it has exponents in it, I took care of it right here. So let us write the formula and label what's what in there. So A is the account balance that means after the uh, interest is compounded how much money do you have after a certain time so we call it account balance p is the initial amount oops r is the percentage of rate N is the number of compounding periods. So that means if they say, okay, the interest is compounded monthly, then the compounding periods are 12 because there are 12 months in a year. T is time in years. All right, with that taken care of, um, this is the formula we really need to understand whenever the question says compounded. The interest is compounded annually. Or anytime you see the word compounded, you know, just use this formula. All right, let us see this fly away. We are coming to the last slide where we'll practice a question related to compound interest. So here in this question, I have completely forgotten what question number it is. I'm just thinking it is four. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know. I am uh, giving a shout out to Alex in this video, in this question. And uh, Alex is having some money. So I just want to be his friend right now. Alex invested $800 in an account. So pretty much all about banks and stuff, you know. And like we talked in class, the job of an actuarial. So you really need to know all this for um, the actuarial profession. In an account with a 2% annual interest.
rate that is compounded monthly see there goes our word compounded um, set set up an equation this is an easy question because you just have to set up an equation you're not calculating anything for balance of Alex's account after X years so remember what our formula was let us write our formula once again and also I wanted to highlight the word compounded that is a reason because the question says it's compounded compound interest so it's not simple interest you are not just calculating at the end of 20 years how much every year the interest is compounded so you're going by the your initial value changes every year pretty much that is what it means so that is our formula now P our principal amount what is Alex starting with eight hundred dollars so our P is eight hundred rate rate is two percent now two percent think about it as two cents out of hundred because percentage is out of hundred so two cents is how much we can write it as a decimal 0 0.02 if I write as at 0 0.2 it will be 20 cents and that's not the number of the rate you know so that will be wrong and how many times is the interest compounded now that is another word catching word interest is compounded monthly and in one year how many months are there so one year is how much 12 months and that's the reason um, our n is 12. all right um, t actually in the questions they will usually ask us they are saying x years so t we'll have to write as x years because uh, maybe in the second part of the question they can give you find the amount that he will get after depositing this money at compounding rate eight hundred dollars after ten years maybe so you'll plug in x equals ten all righty let us uh, make an equation our equation will be total amount a equals eight hundred initial amount one plus zero point zero two the rate here over n what was n twelve the number of times it's compounded and then here i'll have twelve x because in the formula i have n times t so if I have this formula, uh, you know, we can calculate any number of uh, years they have deposited this money. We can always calculate how much money they will have at the end of, let us say, two years, three years. So let us say um, our part B of the question is, what is the amount Alex will get? Four years of graduation. So let us check after four years, what will he get? So we'll have 12 times four here. So 12 times 4 is 48 and you'll put everything into the calculator and you'll get your answer. So um, let me give a give, give away or a something cool to a student who actually calculates and shares the answer in the comment section below. So that was all about the compound interest and I see that the video is almost going to be 30 minutes. So I thank you for your time and taking excellent notes. I truly appreciate all your time. Um, thank you very much for watching the videos and taking good notes, trying to make it to 30 minutes full. Anyways, and show you my drawing skills. Have a good one. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.